We're on the 40th day of the regularly scheduled session. How has this week been? Oh my goodness, it's been so hectic and intense. We've been seeing approximately 30 constituents every week. I've had probably a couple thousand emails, and so I'm worried about constituents. I want them to understand that it's difficult to get back to all their emails, although I'm trying to respond to each one of them. With five committees that I sit on, it's going to take time. But it's been very challenging, and I am very, very honored to be here. So it's been extremely interesting. This week is your first votes on the floor. What do you see coming to the floor for a vote? Well, I think the one that's going to be the most controversial very likely might be the Reproductive Parity Act. And I'll be voting against that. It's a matter of conscience for me, but beyond that, it's a matter of choice. Let's say you're an employer and you're going to provide insurance for your employees. Uh, and it will say that if you are going to provide maternity coverage, you also will have to provide abortion coverage. And the problem with that is um, if you're a religious institution and you don't, uh, it's against their conscience to provide that, then they'll be placed in a very difficult situation. They won't be able to have free choice. The bottom line is really it's against the Medical Care Act. Beyond that, it's a very controversial issue. People have very, very deep beliefs about that, and I, I respect people's right to choose as they so wish. We've also heard of some other controversial bills regarding gun control. How do you feel about those and what bills have you seen come to committee? Well, you know, it's not an easy concept. In the Federal School District, you know, I represent Federal Way, Algona, Pacific, Milton, parts of Auburn and parts of the city of Des Moines. Our school district superintendent has said no to guns in the schools. You know, as far as with the universal background check, a, a lot of people are interested in it because of guns in schools and whether they should or should not be in the schools. With doing a universal background check, it's the issue really is, is there going to be a list maintained of those people who have purchased a gun? And if there is a gun, they call it a gun registry. And if there is a gun registry, could it then be used perhaps to be published to say, who does and do, does not have a gun. And the problem with that is if you don't have a gun and you're listed publicly, then you pretty much are inviting somebody to come in and rob your home. So that's one problem with the gun registry. A lot of people don't believe that government should have anything to do with a gun registry. I believe in the Second Amendment rights and people have a right to choose as they wish to defend their home. You've heard a bill recently in committee that would benefit businesses regarding B&O taxes, House Bill 1693. Tell us about that. What I've been trying to do, and I've talked about this in my last video update, I'd like to create an innovation partnership zone. So there's a new House Bill 1693 that would allow for a break in tax for people who are going to work in an innovation partnership zone, perhaps in technology, perhaps with medical device. We have a medical device incubator in Federal Way. Uh, perhaps with um, medical clusters. We have a wonderful hospital in Federal St. Francis. Auburn has Auburn General. And, and um, medical uh, people tend to cluster in the hospitals. And if you have an innovation zone, perhaps in those areas, that would uh, create a, a think tank for um, new ideas. Uh, those people uh, could receive a tax break and would also receive a tax break if they went into um, manufacturing the idea. Um, so industrial manufacturing would also receive it. It would be new industrial manufacturing would also receive a tax break. So I think that's what I'm trying to find are ways to stimulate our economy and to um, bring jobs, well-paying jobs to our area. On Wednesday, a transportation package proposal was announced. As a member of the Transportation Committee, tell us what's included in that proposal and your thoughts. Well, we've been talking on the Transportation Committee for quite a while now about the mega projects that need to be completed in this entire area. The four mega projects, these are billion dollar projects. The viaduct, the Seattle Tunnel, the completion of the 520 Bridge, the Columbia River Crossings, it's called CRC, it's the bridge from Vancouver to Portland, and then there's the I-90 tolling. And so what we're concerned about is the cost of all of these projects. The chair of the Transportation Committee did release a press announcement about her plan, and her plan is to institute a 10 cent gas tax over the next five years, two cents each year for five years, uh, increase fees, and then also um, more tolls. 
uh, those are all very, very controversial subjects. And my feeling is that in any budget, any city, any government agency should prioritize. As the revenue is available, they should choose those projects that are most critical and then complete those as the money is available. I, I don't want to tax our citizens any more than is necessary. We're already in a recession. I don't want it to go into a great recession. You know, I'm new to government in Olympia, but I'm not new to government as a whole. And in any government budget, you always prioritize. First you figure out what your revenue is, and then you decide what are the most important things that need to be completed, and then you move forward from there.